Our first presentation today is Digital Twin Management for Bosch Smart Home by Dr. Faraz Memon and Alex Tomev. Faraz is the Cloud Platform Lead at Bosch Smart Home. He has several years of end-to-end -end solution design experience spanning over IoT, cloud computing, and enterprise applications. Alex Tolib is the Manager of Solution Architecture at AWS. He is passionate about software development and leveraging lean architectures for complex challenges. Enjoy the presentation. Faraz? So let's begin. Um, so hello and welcome to my talk on digital twin management for uh, Bosch Smart Home. My name is Faraz Maiman and I work as a platform lead for cloud, um, which is an expert for cloud development at Bosch Smart Home. Um, Alex Tolev, as Andrea mentioned from AWS will co-present parts of this talk. So um, let's start with a brief history of Bosch Smart Home. Bosch Smart Home was founded in 2016 we are an international company serving all Western Europe. Uh, within the Bosch Group, we sit at junction of IoT business, enabling grouping of Bosch competencies in IoT. Um, we are the leading brand for smart home solutions in Germany based on market studies of the German market. And our solutions are future proof when it comes to the smart home standard of matter as you might have heard of. So um, let's talk about uh, the footprint of Bosch Smart Home. At the heart of our smart home solution is our gateway called Smart Home Controller. The Smart Home Controller provides home automation possibilities revolving mainly around two domains. The first domain um, being secure living, which includes devices such as uh, motion detectors, um, smoke detectors, and smart cameras, as you can see in the image here. And the second domain being optimal climate, which includes devices such as um, shutter controllers, um, uh, radiator thermostats, as you can see here, and um, other devices like door window contacts. Um, as you can see, some of these devices are part of both domains because uh, they kind of function in both of them. Um, integration of different HMIs like our apps and Amazon Alexa provide user with smart control of their home. So, moving on. So let's talk about the cloud infrastructure at Bosch Smart Home. Our cloud infrastructure uh, can be categorized into two groups. The first one being the smart home services, which you can see at the top here. And the second one being our partner integrations, which are depicted here at the bottom. Um, the smart home services consist of uh, cloud workloads such as smart camera services, device connectivity services, uh, and smart home cloud API. Um, among others. Um, partner integrations consist of workloads connecting Bosch Smart Home to different partners such as MBUX, which is uh, um, in-car inter uh, entertainment connectivity um, system for Mercedes-Benz, um, and Amazon Alexa. So Amazon Alexa for us is also a partner integration. Today, we will focus on um, Smart Home Cloud API, which is based upon the concept of digital twin. So what are digital twins? A digital twin or a digital shadow is a virtual representation of a physical entity and all changes applied on the physical entity are seamlessly reflected to its digital twin. So that is the book definition of the digital twin. So if our smart plug is the physical device, um, a digital representation of it could be a JSON document like this, which shows the state of the smart plug, its name, and a so-called device ID. So 
digital twin life cycle management, which um, re digital twins actually require life cycle management, which must fulfill two requirements, which are pretty straightforward. So you must synchronize changes in the state of the physical device to the, digi to the digital twin. And on the other way around, you must synchronize changes in the state of the digital twin to the physical device. In our cloud infrastructure, the digital twin management component is the, is the component which is responsible for managing the life cycle of all digital twins. The digital twins are actually managed inside um, the Bosch IoT Things SaaS solution. Bosch IoT Things can be imagined as a store of digital twins, which is also which also provides interfaces to our partners um, who would like to access uh, users' devices. So, for example, Amazon Alexa or MBUX are sitting here at the top and communicating with IoT Things for accessing the digital twins of users. We also utilize the Bosch IoT Hub SaaS solution um, as a message broker in this infrastructure. So the flow is something like this. Um, when, whenever a smart home controller, which is the gateway connecting all the edge devices, detects a change, for example, a smart plug was turned on, this state change is published to the IoT Hub, which is a, a message broker, with, and then this event is actually forwarded to the digital twin management, which is then responsible for doing some transformation and synchronizing that information into the digital twin of IoT things. Similarly, in the other direction, whenever a command is received from a partner, for example, to turn on a plug which was off, this command is received at the digital twin management via IoT things and then later forwarded to the smart home controller um, via this path and um, executed there. Digital twin management workload, which you see here, um, was executed in a private cloud until 2022. Moving on, so with our workloads running in a private cloud, we experienced certain limitations with respect uh, to service offering, the SLAs, and cost transparency. And additionally, due to a change in the strategy, it was decided to retire the private cloud and migrate all workloads by end of year 2022. This meant we had to migrate our digital twin management um, from the private cloud to a new destination. And we quickly uh, agreed to focus on public cloud deployment with AWS being the pre preferred public cloud. For the migration of digital twin management itself to AWS, we defined functional and non-functional requirements. So functional requirements being um, Java-based runtime, since our workloads were in Java, HTTP-based incoming interfaces, um, and out-of-the-box support for mutual TLS. Uh, for non-functional requirements, we had um, high availability, increased performance, robustness, low operating cost, and one of the most important ones was low to none infrastructure management effort. While assessing these requirements, we quickly concluded that our target architecture can be serverless based on Amazon API Gateway and AWS Lambda. So our migrated workload looks something like this. So um, the IoT Things and IoT Hub SaaS solutions which we were using remained the same. So from IoT Hub, whenever an event was received, it was pushed um, via an API gateway to an event, so-called event processor um, Lambda, which then synchronized this event or status change into IoT things or the digital twin. Similarly, on the other hand, we had an API gateway for incoming API commands, 
which were then processed by a command processor lambda which then published or executed uh, those operations uh, via iot hub on the smart home controller so after migration we did an assessment of the workload which gave us more insights so the first insight we found out that the event processing performance actually increased for nine uh, uh, about 90 percent so under private cloud we were processing an event uh, from a smart home controller in about 300 milliseconds and now we uh, under lambda we are doing the same in about 30 milliseconds the availability of our workload under aws increased from 98.48 percent to 99.9 percent .9%, which means actually about 10 hours of less downtime per month now everything is not as rosy <laughs> because we uh, also found out that our workload has about 10,000 cold starts per day compared to only four cold starts earlier in the private cloud this means that we are spending about 13 hours in cold starts or initialization phase on lambda and finally one of the major differences which we have noticed since migration is that we have full transparency on workload costs because in aws we can pin down costs to individual components this was not possible uh, for us in the private cloud where we had a single bill for the whole cloud usage so moving on um, in the future we plan to do improvements to our digital workload uh, digital twin management workload and i would highlight a couple of these today so the first one being replacement of bosch iot hub with aws iot core for device connectivity um, the bosch iot hub will also retire soon due to a strategic shift at bosch and as you can see introduction of iot core would help us also reduce the complexity of event processing by getting rid of an api gateway for communication between um, device connectivity a layer and digital twin management so lambdas can actually directly be triggered from aws iot core we are also evaluating lambda snap start which is relatively new feature on lambda to improve the cold start of our jvm based workload so this is actually one of the negative things which i mentioned earlier um, lambda snap start requires us to do some adaptation in our workload with respect to uniqueness and network connection reuse all right then this was it from my side i would hand over to alex for um, discussing further our journey thank you very much Faris, for walking us through the the journey and um, explaining actually the Bosch Smart Home Company and all the capabilities there. Um, let me introduce myself quickly. I'm Alex. Um, I'm an SA manager based out of Germany. Um, and together uh, with my team and Faris and his team, we were working together on helping the Bosch Smart Home team leveraging AWS capabilities. Um, what you have seen, such as, for example, Amazon API Gateway or AWS Lambda to fulfill their requirements. <clears throat> and the next couple of uh, let's say five minutes, five to seven minutes, I'm going to walk you through actually how this collaboration uh, looks like or how we started um, and, and how we engage together to improve customer experience uh, from, from the Bosch Smart Home users. So, um, well, everything starts with, with the first session and we had this first session with the, with the Bosch Smart Home team together with the AWS team. And in this first session, we really want to understand um, uh, regarding our working backwards mechanism, what actually customers who are using Bosch Smart Home devices, um, what kind of pain points they have, what the use case is, um, how, how, how the user experience is. And we really had this conversation to, to better understand because when we understand the Bosch Smart Home customers, then we can also better 
provide guidance in terms of which AWS services, cap services they can use. The good thing is um, at this point in time, as I'm also um, a user for smart home devices, I could actually change the seats and, and ask Faris um, some topics around roadmap and some, some features I, I wanted to see. Um, so this was really a, some kind of a, a novel situation for me, but it was a good one. Um, nevertheless, this is how we, how we kicked it off. Immediately after this first session, we agreed on we, we need some kind of a cadence. So therefore, we set up a biweekly office hours. So every second week, we meet for, for 30 minutes and discuss topics, um, topics around which came up um, during the two weeks or ad hoc questions which come up during the, the session itself um, in a bi-directional way. Um, so this can be really something like, hey, I don't have a good understanding on how to leverage a specific feature of an AWS service. Can you help me on that one? Why I'm stuck with an issue there? How can I continue? As well as with exploring new kind of capabilities, features um, for the future. And so this would be then the next step where we also had some deep dive interactions um, on different AWS services. Faros mentioned the metal standard, and therefore we, we worked together as well with the service team um, to, to talk about um, AWS Private Certificate Authority and how to support actually the new metal standard and how to in integrate that into the Bosch Smart Home applications and devices to be used in the future. Also on that, um, another topic, for example, was really leveraging, for example, Amazon, Amazon Chime SDK for uh, the support function on getting an interactive video call uh, with customers. Um, so those are the deep dives we had in the past, and we are definitely will continue to have more deep dives to see what AWS services and capabilities and features can be used there. We don't want to stop there, we also want to have some kind of continuous engagement support. What I mean with that, we will see in the next slide. That is actually, um, we currently have one topic where we want to jointly um, try to break up a monolithic application into microservices. And now it's not only about the discussion in terms of, yeah, just use a container-based approach and then um, uh, slice your, your monolithic application in some small microservice and you're done. It's really like um, more discussion about what advantages you will get, what drawbacks you will, ha um, you will have maybe, and you have to pay attention. For example, topics around observability, traceability, monitoring, auditing, logging. Those are all those smaller topics around the application which has to be covered as well but can be tricky depending on the size and complexity of the microservices you have. As well as with the, the discussion or the topic around how to slice the microservices or how to slice the monolithic in smaller microservices is also something where we jointly um, work on that one. So it's not something where we as AWS come in and say, this is the way how to go. It's really on understanding together with the Bosch Smart Home team, what are your requirements? What are your pain points? How can we best um, help you and, and suit your needs there? And then really find um, a solution forward. So that is one, one kind of engagement support we are currently driving uh, and which will be continue to drive. Another one in terms of engagement support is further adoption of specific AWS services. For example, Amazon Alexa, as you have seen in one of the first slides, um, where you can use um, um, the service actually to interact with the Bosch devices to see, okay, what other capabilities can be used there, as well as including the future topics such as I've mentioned already, um, the Meta standard, for example, with AWS private CA, or additionally um, supporting the, um, the, the support function with Amazon Chime SDK here. So that is actually the, the, the way how we collaborated and it's really um, um, a joint, joint collaboration between um, Bosch Smart Home and AWS um, on a bi-directional communication. And yeah, with that, I come to an end of this session. And I believe we do have some time looking at Mohan for Q&A. 
think we were quite fast, so we have a little bit more time for Q and A. Awesome. Thank you for us. Thank you, Alex. Awesome presentation. I think um, um, folks, uh, you can ask questions. Come off mute uh, and ask the questions uh, to the speaker. Uh, there was one question in the chat. Uh, I think it was got answered, but. Uh, uh, for us, if you want to address it uh, again, uh, any reason of using Bosch IoT Hub instead of AWS IoT Hub? If you could just uh, touch on that roadmap uh, a little bit. So yeah, there are just historical reasons for that. Um, the initial solution which was developed within Bosch was based on the products which we already had. Um, and yeah, I, at that, time there were certain requirements from our end which were not being fulfilled by iot hub so um, aws iot hub i mean so that's why we had chosen that um this is going to change in the future yeah thank you so any, any other questions uh, folks you can ask um, meanwhile i i just had one question um uh, re related to certificates i think you mentioned certificates yeah. and identity um uh, how how do you manage this life cycle of this certificates and what's the plan for the future? So, um, the certificate management for certificates on our smart home controller, let's say, is done by a KMS system, which is um, directly connected, not via the AWS IoT core, but by a proprietary uh, protocol to the controller. So. Whenever a smart home controller needs a certificate change, it's uh, going over that uh, KMS system. Yeah. And okay. yeah. Sounds good. And uh, the other question I had was related to latency because your mm -hmm. users are spread out all over the world. And uh, how do you manage uh, latency for your application? So most of our uh, users are concentrated in the um, in the EU region, so we have uh, deployments in in um, couple of regions in within EU, uh, but we also have some deployments in in North America to support certain use cases, which are specific to people in uh, certain countries. Yeah. Okay, so you have some multi-region deployments. Yes. Okay. We have multi-region deployments. Okay. Thank you.